God, the stories that I've heard on this episode will blow your mind. It's been hours since this guest left, and this set is still buzzing. Just Adetomo has been called the cloud chaser, and I ask her about that, but she insists she's a prophetess and an activist. Everything she says, she's under compulsion by God to say. Everything she does is because she learned that's the only way to get things done in Nigeria. From her experiences as a child, being abandoned with TB Joshua by her dad, to the entire sequence of events with seeing um, visions of Mobad and Mobad talking to her on a live video on Instagram after his passing, to her husband's 87 girlfriends whom she had to dispatch, to the time that the hotel manager started to chase both of them out because the other one couldn't believe the kind of sex that they were having. That gives you an idea of the kind of stories I've heard from just a day to me. But I was compelled to sit and listen. Her stories will blow your mind. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to start by the story of um, baby happiness. Somebody just sent a message, oh baby happiness, this woman has abandoned this baby to die, blah blah blah. And you know we have a long list of babies we attend to, so I'm like, mm. okay, let's give this girl another few days we'll attend to her, you know. Right. In fact, we got to the address and they said nothing like this. And people know me around, they said, just a little, just a little. We said, it is this place we just got on the bike. Mm. And getting there, we saw baby happiness lying lifeless. As a matter of fact, the minute they saw me, they said the baby was already dead. Mm. That because it was when they got into the room and then they saw her foaming mm. and then she was, you know, lifeless. And that was when they started to shout before that lady called me again. All of a sudden, baby happiness came to life. Mm. Baby happiness was, you know, breeding and all that. So we got there, I was like, wow. I saw four other kids there, baby happiness siblings. So the story of baby happiness is... The mother is a young lady who has been exposed to whatever sort of relationship because the shocking thing is by the time we took baby happiness to hospital we did have, we discovered that both parents are positive ah, they're carriers right. so you can imagine so baby happiness is from another father right. and then the other kids are from other parents right. and then we had to pick baby happiness up mm -hmm. and then you know took her into custody and then called legal states so the brother ambulance we took baby happiness to the hospital, normally we, once we get them into the hospital, we want to check everything. So we said, okay, do a blood test, do this, do this, and this cancer. Baby happiness is HIV positive. I'm like, what? Yeah. You know what? Test all the children at once for me. Mm. They tested every other four of them. They were negative. Ah, thank God. I said, you know what? Where would this be coming from? Then the, the people told me, oh, madam, there's a man that usually comes here to sleep with her. Mm. That this is not even a house. Flood took away her house at things, and then that baby was barely about a week old. Mm -hmm. And so they just wanted to help her. That was why they gave her that house temporarily to stay in. That even at that, you still see different men sneaking in the middle of the night to sleep with baby happiness mom. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? So, you know, we took baby happiness to the hospital and then kept her there, receiving treatment. And then we had to start calling all the departments, you know, to do all sort of investigations and all that. Baby happiness is finally been discharged from the hospital and we've handed her back to Lagos State Government. Mm. Baby happiness is the governor now and I'm sure she's, she's going to get better over time. That's amazing. Well done. Where was her mother though? We didn't meet her mother when we got there. She came into the room from somewhere. I don't know. Right. Maybe they went to call her or something. She, she came into the room, but she wasn't there when we got yeah. there. So is she involved in the baby's life now, that the baby's with the government? So what happened is, when we got to the hospital, because once we take such people to the hospital, we pay them. Mm. We also pay them to stay with the children, because right. most of them, if you go to all these government hospitals, they are children that have been abandoned there. Right. Because you hear it's a free medical facility, but they will tell them, go and buy a syringe, do tests, they can't afford it, so they are abandoned. So we have a strategy on board. Once we get there, we allow the security people, watch for this person. This person must not escape. So when we got there, we already did all the security signals. So there was no way. She tried like three, four times to want to run away. But, mm -hmm. you know, we alerted the security people and then she was there. And then we were paying her 
almost every week, 20,000. To stay with her own child. Yes, because when we're inside the ambulance, she said she doesn't want to touch the child. Why? And even at home, she says to people she doesn't want to touch the child. I don't know whether she doesn't just have a motherly affection or love for the child, or she just feels something negative mm -hmm. about the child, because she did, never even knew that the baby had HIV. It was yeah, when we did the test yeah. later yeah. that we told her, and then we started to ask her question. She also doesn't even have any prior information to what HIV AIDS yes. is. And all really? that. But from the onset, she's been morally, socially, emotionally, morally disassociated yeah. from happiness. Yeah. So the first signal we got when we got a message was also, Let's, I'm going to leave her to die. Right. So she sent the message. She didn't send no, the she message. Didn't say, so Somebody who saw, saw her, her the message, heard yeah. what she said, went into the room, took a video of the child, uh, sent it to us, and we heard this in the video, and when yeah. she said, make the child die, nothing consigned me. Wow. So uh, obviously she didn't want that child. Yeah, so she was actually possibly hoping that this child would just yes, die. Yes, she was hoping, move. yes. As a matter of fact, as at the second day, people didn't recognize that that was still baby happiness. Right. You know, so I feel that girl, happiness is, has a purpose in life, of course. which must be fulfilled. Yeah. So we are monitoring her, especially from every other child that we have. You have an NGO called Feed the Child, I think, yeah. yes. When, when was that founded? 2015, okay. Feed, Educate, Enlighten, Dignify a Child Community. Feed, Educate, educate Enlighten, enlighten dignify, dignify a Child Community right. Initiative. Because that's what the feed means. That's what it means. Right, okay. So it's our right to feed those children. It's our right to educate them. It's our right to enlighten them about what is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. Immorality, moral dependency in the society. Mm -hmm. It's also our right to dignify and respect every child. Mm -hmm. So it's a community thing. So we go around communities. We do, we, we do all of this. Right. And so why did you found it? Coming from a very wealthy, rich home, my father had everything. Money could buy. But there was one thing money could not buy. I was completely a paralyzed child. Hmm. I couldn't walk. My father flew me everywhere in the world hmm. just to make sure that this girl can walk. So if you tell my father, there's a doctor in Italy, there's somebody in Rome, we're there. My mom was there, you know. And the last resort, my mom is an Igbo woman, my dad is Yoruba. Right. So, you know, you marry an Igbo woman to Yoruba land, and then they'll be like, where you go see this kind of best outbreak, you know? So they gave my mom the last chance, mm. the last of the chances. So the last chance was, there's a place in Italy, they're going to take her, and then they're going to make her walk. So the, who gave her the last chance? Her in-laws, your father's my father's, family? My father's family and my father. So, ah. Okay. So once this doesn't work, take this child and go back to your Igbo land. Wow. You know? So... They went to Italy, they took me to Italy. And then, if the only thing the doctors could do with all the money they paid was to give my mom a one-legged shoe higher than the other and say, okay, they should start to do therapy. And then by the time I start to stand, you know, one leg will raise, you know, when the one heel is higher than the other, that that's the best they could do. So put me back on my wheelchair and then came back for one reason. I think I'm the only child my father spent so much time and efforts getting to the root of who she is. So if you're telling me that my dad apologized, my dad never apologized. As a matter of fact, from all the children that my dad had, I was the only first and only person that on the day they were naming me, armed robbers came to attack my father to the point that my father jumped fence. And that day my father jumped fence from Alausa. You see that shop right, the current shop right, you will notice that there are some blocks of houses up until that fire brigade or whatever, um, fire uh, brigade, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. My father owned all those houses. So that was the house they wanted to do my naming ceremony. Arm robbers came to attack them there. My father jumped fence, found his way to highway, got to Elysian, and that was the last time my father slept in Lagos. <laughs> so it is a wild story. You, you, so wait, 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 wait. I, he left you and jumped the fence. My father left me, my mom, <laughs> my father jumped fence, saved his own life, got into his car with his driver, went straight to hometown commission. So from the time I have been born, I have been mystery to both my parents. Right. Do you understand? So which of it is my father going to apologize, apologize for? Now let me bust your bubbles. So by the time all his children, his old 10 children had made it in life, America, London, I was in Ogun State University. I now became the only child who sacrificed mm -hmm. her youth for my father. I'm the one who will go to school in the morning, come back and make food for my dad, you know, massage his body. It got to a point, my friends were like, oh, my babe, wake up now, wait till they worry you and your papa, now you they marry your father. Mm -hmm. I, might, I had a stepmother that they'll come and carry me, we'll go to the club, you know, that at least I should just, I remember them, Dapo, 
that Kwadi really and all that they were having Toyosi, Fumia Ulowo, and all of that. Were they were having a party. They had planned that party in Lagos. So they said, when they are coming from Agoi, they will just pick me. I don't know how my father got to me about that conversation. Should they, I don't dress up. I don't wear shoes. I was just tiptoeing, going out of the gate. I had given this gate man 1,000. I just helped me open. You know, when you are just on your last leg to open, somebody just said, hey, we'll grab it. Right? That was how my father napped me again. Oh, yeah, I'll give you two five. You are not going anywhere. You know, so it was still the same me. The day my father died, he died in my hands. Oh, really? Yes. So the same me that, uh, my father went and dumped me with Pastor T.B. Joshua. Uh -huh. At some point, my father packed me. He didn't bother about education. Oh, my yeah. father packed me and said, you know what? This girl, go and live with Pastor T.B. Joshua, synagogue. So my father took me single until my mom came and said, leave this picking for me. Mm. Give me. Telling you to be Joshua, did he think he was doing a good thing for you? My dad thought he was helping me to build my spiritual, spiritual. life. Because when my dad was alive, the, he belonged to, you know, those days, the rich mm. people, you must belong to something, whether it is Oboni mm. or one cause. So which one did he belong to? So he was the, a lodge member, all these Oboni right. things. Because yeah. even when he died, that was another drama for another. I can't that was imagine. the first time. As a young girl, I stood tall for my father. I said, anybody they dear. I was sleeping with my father's dead body. What? Yes. Why? They took him to the hospital. Uh -huh. When my dad died, I was, he died in my hands. Yes, you said so. I was going we to called ask the ambulance. They couldn't do anything, you know? They took him to the hospital. The hospital rejected my father. I said, this man in this hospital, you want them to come and bombard this hospital? It's not possible. Because of his lodge membership? Because his lodge membership and right. his popularity. Right. All the Akari bulls, all the Obas, they don't, they're happy saying, hey, grand mm. patron, don't buy, mm -hmm. you know? So they had to take my father's body. They were looking for where to take him. I said, bring my father's body home. So we took my father's body and then we put him in the bedroom. And then when family members heard that Latayo was there, they started to come, where is the key of the house? Where is this, where is that? I didn't even answer. I just took one fake key. I just gave it to them. So my father's body was there. Every night I go to sleep with him. Sorry. So, father, so he had died at this time? My father had died. So no mortuary could keep my dad. Yes. No hospital could keep him. So he him. had to come back the home. The only thing was we brought him right. home. So they, the Methodist people came because mm -hmm. my father is also a Methodist member right. by birth, you know. So the Methodist people came. They came. They prayed for us and all that. And we also didn't tell them that his body was in the house. Right. They didn't know his body was in Why? the house. Why didn't you tell them? Because at that point, nobody trusted anybody. We, we, we didn't know happen. the gravity of what my father had put himself oh, into. Oh, right. So you don't know whether someone's going to try and so steal the body or something. No, it, it wasn't as if whether. They had started showing up. They had started coming. They had started making requests. They had started speaking to my elder brothers. My elder brother, my dad's first son, lives in Lagos. They had started talking to them. They had started calling them. Right. So those, kinds of rituals those and... ones were already bulging. Those ones, they were already chicken out, bulging mm. and all that, you know. And me, the youngest, I just said, you yeah. can't even try. So you will stay with your dad's body so that nobody will come and nobody, take the body and do anything you with it. You couldn't. And they didn't attack you? How? With their spiritual something? How? <laughs> Maybe until God gives anybody that power. You can't attack me spiritually. I'm greater than you. Hmm. Hmm. Whatever you believe in, hmm. somebody sitting here is bigger than that thing. I love that. So... At the end of the day, my brothers even came, even became war between the children. Let them carry you. There's one of my sisters that one started crying. She doesn't want to allow. Our dad already said he settled these people, and these people are claiming that there's no settlement. Too. He said they already contributed one thing and this and this and that. Too. All that drama tarried. Me, I was just busy. I'd, I'll just go and check my father's, but he completes in the night. We'll sleep together, wake together. And let me even shock you. My stepmom at that time, that one too, even wanted to enter the room. To you do know, what? As usual now. You know, once it's polygamy, everybody wants to grab whatever is grabbable and do whatever is doable. So she was trying to take things from inside the room. So she entered and right. then she only to realize that dead body and the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know, so today, I've seen too much. I've gone through so much for me to even now feel the life I'm living today is not a challenge. It's just a fulfillment mm. of who I am. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow! It is what it is. <laughs> okay, you know? so growing up with TB Joshua, you know the, all the controversies about TB Joshua now. People, yeah. some people think he's a fake prophet, some people think he's a false pastor. You have first hand experience of him. Was he a genuine man of God? I was young at the time I was living with TB Joshua, right. but I saw rare things. 
Mm. I saw Pastor TB Joshua wouldn't be able to eat. Sometimes he doesn't eat palm oil. Sometimes he doesn't eat salt. Whatever food they are going to give him. As a matter of fact, inside that Ikotun Egbe where we were then, the place where he's living, we have to get onto like a small ferry or a paddle boat and then take him. Pastor TB Joshua didn't have a bed. He didn't have AC. He didn't have TV. It's just like a room that was combined with wood. Right. You know, just like you know all these um, houses on the water. Right, you know, right, right, right. Like, like when like you put the planks yes, together, yes. that's where, and then a mattress, that's where. Why? He, uh, that's the life he was living us at the time I was there, you yeah. know. And then if he wants to come to the church, they bring him to the church. He has an office inside the church as well, but mm -hmm. if he has to sleep and all of that, he goes there. I remember his daughter, Tokbe, I remember his wife. For a very long time, I never saw the wife coming close. And mm -hmm. I asked that question, said, mm -hmm. when you're, as that, there's nothing like, um, Sexual. He cannot have sex with his wife. Oh, there's nothing like sexual. That's when you're spiritual. You're spiritual. You're clean. You know. So how do you get the children? No, like there are times okay, where there are times he has to step stay. Aside. Okay, yes, right. and then I think it got to a point in his life where that wasn't obviously <laughs> happening anymore. You know. But what so doesn't happen anymore? Like the separation. Maybe sex and all of that. You so know? I must have stopped having sex. You know, at some Pastor Tibi Joshua got to a point where his life was even controlled. Even his preachings. Obviously, Tibi Joshua is a very, very spiritual being. Though the relationship between Pastor Tibi and uh, Joshua and I and my dad was different because, you know, my dad was a spiritual craving person. You know, my dad wanted to break record in every angle. Oh, this is the church that is raining. My stepmother carried one pregnancy for about 11 to 15 years. I don't know where she uh -huh. Yes. So when it got to that point, that was how they got encountered with Pastor T.B. Joshua. So they carried that with that pregnancy there, you know. So that is you have a lot of stories. Hold on. Sorry. Wait. Mm -hmm. Your stepmother had a child for 15 years. Had a pregnancy. pregnancy for a very long time. Yes. Until tomorrow, she never gave birth to that child. So, but after my dad died, she's got twins. I don't know how she got the twins, you know. But until, ah, I remember my papa don't buy flasks, buy everything. Where, you know, when we're going to school, we were in boarding school. Hey, by the time we're coming back, we're coming to do it. Come on. We would like, when you born, call us. So let them come. And say, no, well, like, will they go, they come. Will they go, they come. Will they go, they come. We don't see better. You graduated and the baby has not come out. We graduated. Because was she really not, pregnant? Yeah, then? she was pregnant. So this was a spiritual attack? Yeah, but uh, whatever spirituality is, what spirituality it is, you know. But me, I know, yeah. say, I enter secondary school, graduate, I still not see Peking. So it was when it got to a point, that was when my dad took her to T.B. Joshua, because then, yes. you know, they were, there was, could be a miracle and all of that. So they took her to Right. Did you think the miracle to... happened? That's why she eventually had the twins? No. She had twins for another man after my dad died. So what happened to that baby? The pregnancy disappeared after some time. So we didn't see anything anymore. So, oh, so that so, must have been a spiritual intervention. So that was yes, a spiritual right. intervention. Okay, before. so you did answer the question. Did you think that T.B. Joshua, so he was a spiritual man? Yes. T.B. Joshua was a spiritual man. Yeah, but was he, do you think he was a genuine man? See, let God? me tell you something about spirituality. God okay. uses spirituality in different ways. Why do you think that the blog, Jesus Lover, is on your matter? You know, because, so in researching for this interview, they've said some really heavy things. They've said that you're a member of Oboni now. It makes sense. I mean, you've mentioned your dad, so maybe that's what they could say. You're a member of Oboni. They've called you a former call girl. Is there any truth to any of these allegations they've made? And what exactly is the fight that you and this blogger have? Number one, you and I, nobody knows who this lover is, number one. Right. Number two, I'm sure there's something they always say on social media, come mm. with receipts. Mm. Nobody, upon everything that has been said about me, there mm. has not been a single receipt. So whoever that blogger is, mm. Is just trying to change the narrative of me as just a day to. Mm -hmm. Like when they started to talk about myself and my husband, his mm -hmm. ex-wife ran to him. Madam, you have failed in court. Spiritually, you have failed. This is a woman who has appeared to me in America as a cat. This is a woman who would appear to me in the middle of the night. Sometimes my husband would be like, what is all this fight? I would tell my husband, listen, the only reason why I just overlooked this woman, I have not gone into prayer and fast because she's got kids for you. Mm. I have been invited by the leaders of witchcraft before. Before yeah. election, yeah. there was no Atiku, there was no Peter Obi. They were after my life because of the way I fight. Who was there? Who is there? Politicians. Right. Because of the way I also come to attack them. Mm. My husband used to work with them. As at the time I met my husband, he was not working with the government anymore. Mm. And he's a technocrat. But they keep looking at it that you be Lagos boy now, you be APC, your wife not supposed to do this. Follow your wife, talk now, calm her down. And one day, when one of them called, my husband said, you know what, the only thing you people can do to this woman that I know can stop this, if you can take her to India and let them drain her blood and put another blood. So that by the time she wakes up, she would have lost memory. That because even me that I am her husband, living with her 
I don't understand how she does this thing. And I was able to fight and conquer. I had 14 miscarriages. 14 times. 14, 14, 14 miscarriages. miscarriages. With all my receipts. My scan. For paper. your husband? Yes. This is eight years. I get that. So, so just to be clarify the story, are you saying or implying that your mother-in-law was behind the miscarriages? Stepmother. Step whatever sorry. spiritual battles they were doing. Sometimes she would appear to me in the dream and she would start to beat me with broom. Right. Sometimes when we go into court, she would just turn into... She, she appeared to me in America as a cat. My friend would run out until tomorrow. My friend can't sleep in that house. Saw her life. You said Mobad was speaking to you and was telling you things. So I wanted to explain what your inspiration was for getting involved in the whole Mobad matter. When Mobad started to come to me, the only thing that weakened me about Mobad was when he said, said, you know you are too great, you can help me. The minute that boy said that thing. And so he said this after he had passed, so this was yes, his spirit this talking was to you. on the, I think it was on the 12th, no, mm -hmm. was it on the 15th or there about 12, 13, 15, I can't remember, because I released a song, my Calvary song, yes. on the 11th, yes. and then this happened, and then I just told all the bloggers, stop, even before I came on the issue that somebody has died last month, I told my PR post, I told Etunde, all of you should post on publishing, and that somebody, a young person just died, and we are all saying, let's pay respect, until he came to me. So it was when he said that, that, but you know you are a two person. Mm. I was weak. He specifically told me what he wanted. He said, I lost track in life. Okay. I was chasing what I never needed, mm -hmm. because I thought, I needed to get to where I'm not supposed to get to. This is my path. This is where I went to. But the problem is, now, I can't go to heaven. And I can't rest. I am just like a whirlwind everywhere. I just want to rest where there is solace. That was all he first said to me. His spirit identified that you had these powers and the spirit thought that you could be able to bring it back from the dead. But I wouldn't do that. But you couldn't. So the whole process of that whole thing achieved nothing then? The whole process of that thing achieved a lot. Okay, what was the thing that it achieved? But they didn't allow me to talk and I kept quiet. Who I didn't wanted allow you to. Talk? You see the way the social media people started yes. to do this, do this. Can you tell, at least share with me? Today. I'm not social media people. Today. Whether you're social media people or not, mm -hmm. Mubad is dead. Yes. Mubad said a lot. Right. The time when I wanted to talk, right. I didn't. That didn't mean that I didn't do a lot behind as a person. Yeah, so, so the thing that what Mo Mobad wanted mm -hmm. is more of a spiritual thing and told me a lot of things that led to his death, how everything transpired and all of that, right. which I took my time mm -hmm. and I listened. I went to five different mountains. Mm -hmm. And you know the funny thing? I even posted it on my status. When we were leaving F1 Lai, he came clear mm -hmm. on the sky. I wasn't only the one who saw it, even the other pastors saw it. So what he wanted mm -hmm. was more, because he said this whole thing is going to cause chaos, drama, unable to unravel, but this, mm -hmm. is, this, this is this, this is this. And I understand very well. Right, right. So you're saying that whatever it is he wanted to accomplish... If I had spoken, yeah. he would have settled Mubad's issue since. But because people thought she's a cloud chaser, yeah. it's not possible so to speak it, to so the... It, I just kept watching. See, listen. So you don't care what people... I don't care what people yes. so say. So why would you stop the assignment listen, for them? I don't care what people say, but mm. I have achieved the most important thing. Okay. So nobody's going to come back and tell you that Mobad is appearing today. Okay, I right. had over right. 100 people who say, ah, and say I saw Mobad. Some people mm. not believe. In fact, there is a lady who Mobad went, a pregnant woman, who she pleaded to go back into her womb. Mm. And you know, when this lady chatted me, I saw her. I asked her. I said, who gave you this name? She chatted with her Instagram page. I chatted, I said, who are you? She was coding. I said, don't code, I know you very well. I said, where is your grandmother? Your grandmother initiated, you gave this speech. She said, Auntie, how did you know? I said, you're asking me how I got to know. You're talking to a prophetess, and you're asking me a prophetess how I got to know. You know, the most important thing is that boy, this is a worldly fight, mm -hmm. but that boy wanted a spiritual settlement. Right. So he, he wanted to it. rest. Right. Did you ever hear anybody telling you Mobad is coming to them? He's resting. Right. You said you had been married twice before your present yes. partnership. What happened with those? So my first marriage, pretty young, right. you know, and this man came from nowhere, saw me in the mechanics village, you know, we got talking, liked me. And then, you know, I like, I like Papa of Gong. I love Papa of you know, See, you see somebody, he, and then he bought me a G-Wagon. Look at her, I say, G-Wagon, Babu. I don't, you see, I've seen money, I've seen wealth. My father is a trilonia. And uh, the Madeleke and all of them, they used to come to our house then to play with my dad, have meeting conversations, all this FCMB. So it wasn't nothing to me. Mm -hmm. This guy only used Popov to trick me. All that Popov in America and told them to deliver to me in London. Now you have fallen in love. 
I say I fall in love. <laughs> I fall. I go love up. I go, I go love that man. <laughs> I love that man finish. Give birth to my first son. I said, don't for London. But you know, the London in me, you know, this, this is a guy that used to give me $1,500 every day. What? Posting money to me from America. By 5 o'clock in the evening, he's already at the post office, either at the airport post office in New York. Once or two. So every day I was always <coughs> going to the post office in London to receive money. I have a whole bundle, you know. This is somebody that would so fine girl. And then don't forget, oh, you already heard the gist that now one trillion and one marry me. My man agree. So he don't buy you. I'm going to say, okay, oh, that one no work. Now that pop off, you know, work. I wanted to come to Nigeria. I wanted to be the person, okay, I read this at my first degree. I wanted to, you know, do business, do everything. He told me, no, stay in London. I said, I did go to Nigeria. He gave me condition. He said, the only reason why I can allow you to go to Nigeria is if you have to go and stay with my father in Oboluku in Delta State. Yeah. I say, you see me finish. Fine girl. We set like me. I born. I know even resemble say I don't see Bele before. Make I can't go village. Name with the Lagos. He now said, okay, I'll buy you a house in Ogudu. See, English came you. English wiped me. When he now said Ogudu, I now started to call my aunties. I said, where is Ogudu? They said, oh, nice area. Don't worry, if you are coming to Nigeria, you can stay there. The minute he said, there's one area in Ogudu, Kwaku, I'll buy. I said, me, go live for Kwaku, Omo. I see, I said, me, I'm not going. No. Oh, that was how I scattered the old drama. I said, I'm not going to live in Kwaku, and I'm not going to live in your father in Asaba. <laughs> I am here. I don't know what, what carried me, Now, so I carried myself, enter play with 120 pounds. And I said, okay, there's my auntie now said, that you come to Nigeria, that I'll stay in Magodo. Magodo, I said, Magodo, alawalam. That was how I packed my bag and baggages and said, yes, I've arrived. Uh -huh. That was how I got to Nigeria. Oh, the minute I touched ground, that was the end of my relationship. Mm. The guy just closed eye for me. In fact, the guy punished me. Now he helped me call immigration, now he punished me. I went through miserable life. Ten oh, you were, you told me you were married. Married, now he paid yeah, my bride price. relationship. He right? paid my bride price. Right. So when you came back, then he now turned against you. That I disobeyed. I said, they know they disobeyed their tama. They know they disobeyed Guinea. So Baba Shabi became the, the most challenging man that I've been with. Right. But we weathered the storm together. Yeah, right. So today, when people say, my husband did this for me, they, they, they like, now did you should use I'll be like, my husband will tell them, Come and enter. When I met him, he had 87 girlfriends. Sorry, 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 what? So when you met your husband, he had 87 girlfriends? My husband had 87 girlfriends. Like girls that were his friends? That or... he was sleeping with, they were enjoying, they were... Baba Shabi tell me that. Let me even shock you, Baba Shabi tell me that. When I said, Baba Shabi, who is this one again? He said, I'm looking for jobs. You will no get job. Where is your recruitment center? <laughs> Where are you looking for job for them? You that you have left Lagos State, you are the one looking for them. Baba Shabi, you know so? I fought the battle. Some people came with revenge. He gave me Bele, he said, no, go collect. I remove Bele. This one will come. I dated you for 15 years. This one will come. I've been with you for 20. Can you come? This one will come. So uh, did you I stay? leave my husband to sleep with you. So I, because I realized that I was an assignment in his life. Wow. 87 babes. You know what it caused me at some point? Mm -hmm. Damn blocker. When I read those charts, some of these girls, he doesn't even go to meet them. They'll be like, I saw you with this just a little girl. What are you doing with her? You that you like boobs, she doesn't have boobs. You that you like ass, she doesn't have ass. When I read, I just say, thank you. So when Baba Shabi is expecting to read up the charts, you just realize that this, ha, ah, who taught my first about your, can, your counselor is here, your therapist. So gradually like that, 87 of them, the active, active babes, Tell me that they were so they were even dormant. But these were the active no, ones. No, I'm talking about the active ones. I'm not talking about the dormant ones. <laughs> the very first day we went to his apartment in Sulu, there was a you know hand luggage where the car go airport. Should they filled with condom? I said, what be? Are you working for UNESCO or UNICEF? Or which one are you working? He said they give you. I said they give you what? You won't kill yourself. Let me know. Okay, you want to laugh? The very first time. Baba Shabi and I were going to sleep on the same bed. We went to Lekki. As a matter of fact, they, they, they chased us out of that hotel at last. They wrote a letter that, you these two people. <laughs> we don't want to see you again. Because, you know, Baba Shabi saw me naked. He said, ah, you know, go better for the guests. You have nipple on your ring. You have nipple, you have ring on your nipple. I've never seen this before. Papa Shabi started shouting. The hotel people came. Papa Shabi pushed. It was more like this guy hit me. He said, he said ah, you. They said, oh, God was, he said, now not pay. Now, Papa Shabi was screaming. Papa Shabi was almost mad, seeing me naked for the first time. Yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Today. You're this welcome. has been.
a blast of a conversation. I know. And I'm glad that we finally did it. All my best, Obashali. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.